Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the uh, study on the diversity of uh, phylum Echinodermata. Uh, the classification we were continuing, and in this presentation, we'll be looking into the Echinoderm class of Euroidea. Of Euroidea is considered to be the largest class of Echinoderms with nearly 20, uh, almost like 2,000 uh, described species. And they are characterized by a wide variety of uh, cryptic lifestyles. And for the reason, they are not much conspicuous. Okay. They inhabit almost all types of benthic marine uh, habitats from intertidal zones to a depth of nearly 6,000 meters. Okay. Uh, they comprise the echinoderms, which are popularly known as basket uh, stars, brittle stars, or serpent stars. Of Euroidea, the term comes from office which means snake aura means tail and in the form uh, the reason is they have uh, like they sh uh, show the serpentine movement of the arms and uh, they have very fragile easily breakable uh, arms okay. so they resemble asteroids in that their body consists of a central disc as you can see over here the central disc and uh, the arms uh emerging from the uh disc okay and uh, the arms are long slender and more sharply set off from the disc uh, unlike the asteroids where the arms gradually emerge from the central disc over here you can see it is uh, uh, a sharp set off from the disc okay now looking into the structure the other features uh of your eyes, uh, they are often overlooked because of their small size and uh, they are often found to occupy crevices in rocks and corals and also uh, cling on to uh, marine uh, like algae okay uh, the arms of ephyroids as already mentioned they are long and unlike those of asteroids they are sharply set off from the central disc uh, giving the central disc a, a very peculiar uh, pentagonal shape okay here you can see the pentagonal shape of the central disc okay uh, brittle stars they have branched arms and most have a central disc that ranges in size from one to three centimeters while basket stars uh, they have arms that branch repeatedly and neither dermal branchiae nor pediciliary are present in the of heroids. okay you can see here ambulacral grooves pediciliary and dermal branchiae are absent in the of heroids. okay the tube feet when you see the tube feet are present but the tube feet they lack suction discs and uh, ampullae they lack suckers and ampullae and uh, contraction of the muscles associated with the base of the tube feet extends to the uh, extends the tube feet actually the extension of the tube feet is brought about by the muscular contraction okay unlike the uh, uh, asteroids madriporite uh, it is on the oral surface so the madriporite as well as the mouth it is on the oral surface of the of your roids. okay so uh, it is having a flat body with a thin disc and uh, five or more uh, slender flexible arms and arms uh, are formed of a series of segment like sections you can see over here okay this is a figure which shows the uh, uh, oral view this is the oral view and this is the uh, aboral view actually it is not the external view the aboral disc have been removed uh, here uh, the aboral disc wall has been cut away it to show the internal structures okay so it is uh, we can't say it is the aboral view but it has been the aboral uh, body wall has been cut away to uh, view the to show the internal structures okay well this is the oral view okay so here you can see the arms right so arms they are formed of a series of segment like sections or articles and each section being formed of four shields right so this is about the uh, general features uh, of of your rights. okay uh, unlike the uh, asteroids the water vascular system in the case of ophiroids it is not used for locomotion instead the skeleton is modified to per, uh, like permit a unique form of grasping and movement okay um the of your rights, they are predators and scavengers and they use their uh, arms and tube feet in sweeping motions to collect the prey and particulate matter which are then transferred to the mouth okay the basket stars they are suspension feeders uh, they, uh, usually they wave their arms and trap plankton on mucus uh, covered tube feet 
and this trapped plankton it is uh, passed from tube feed to tube sorry what you call tube food to tube food uh, along the length of the arm until it reaches the uh, mouth okay so it is actually interesting to uh, uh, like watch how they transfer the food from one tube food to the other and then it uh, pass on this food till it reaches the mouth okay and uh, so uh, we can see here when you take out the aboral uh, uh, disc wall this is how it looks like very uh, extensive stomach pouch and here you can see structures which are known as bursae okay the bursae these are actually membranous sacs and uh, these invaginate from the uh, oral surface of the central disc and these uh, allow you can see here the okay these are almost like um, uh, what do you call um, fluid filled disc in which water constantly circulate and hence help in respiration and also they serve as root chambers okay now looking into the uh, examples yeah here the sexes are separate and development it is indirect with a larva uh, specifically it is ophiopluteus ophiuroidea with ophiopluteus larva okay and many of your roids have the powers of autotomy uh, and regeneration in the sense uh, autotomy is actually self mutilation uh, that is it can uh, uh, like uh, this of your roids they uh, if a um, vertical brittle star it is grasped by an arm arm in the sense over here <laughs> okay if it is grasped by an arm what it does is the uh, contraction of certain muscles may just cut off and cast off the arm okay and this actually removes the arm that particular arm and uh, this process is known as autotomy okay autotomy or self cutting right and this is used as uh, in escape reactions fine so uh, later what happens they can regenerate the arm so autotomy and regeneration is uh, you can see the uh, being exhibited by of your rights okay uh, now the example we have is uh, of your tricks Right. Of your tricks, it is a spiny brittle star and it is an inhabitant of Atlantic coast and southeastern coast of India. And it is a solitary, fast moving nocturnal animal, uh, very active in, uh, at night. You can see the central pentagonal disc of the body, right? So it consists of a small, almost pentagonal. Uh, here it, it is somewhat like a uh, circle rounded, isn't it? A central disc. And they have five long radial arms. Uh, slender ones the arms are many jointed over here you can see this is uh, somewhat like many jointed uh, arms uh, usually flexible highly flexible brittle and freely movable and they are covered with calcareous plates and they are beset with spines uh, so here they are provided with spines okay you can see here the arm spines okay uh, around this uh, this one you can see the spines okay uh, the disc is almost flat with definite um, oral and aboral surface the oral surface it bears as already mentioned it bears both mouth and madreporite on the same side unlike the um, what you call asteroidia and it is on the oral surface uh, here you can see the mouth opening and here the madreporite it is on the oral surface okay uh, anus ambulacral groups dermal branchiae pedicillaria they are all absent and uh, mouth that is provided with five movable calcareous plates so these you can see here uh, five movable calcareous uh, plates and these uh, act as jaws of the mouth and extending over the mouth are sp uh, spines and uh, these spines they act as strainers or sieve like structure okay and at the base of each arm uh, here you can see you can find the basal plates okay on the oral surface of the uh, on the or oral surface at the base of each arm you can find a pair of slits on either side of the arm this is known as a basal slits okay it's known as a basal slit and each basal slit it leads into a pouch it is known as a genital bursae the genital bursa okay gonoducts open to the genital bursa here you can see at the base of the bursa you can find the gonads so the gonoducts open into the genital bursa and mature sex cells and nitrogenous waste pass out through the basal slits okay it, uh, it moves out into the surrounding medium through the basal slits genital bursa thus it serves as major respiratory surface as already mentioned and also for 
uh, what you call uh, collecting and then uh, like passing on the mature sex cells into the external medium. And hence the genital bursa, they are often referred as genito respiratory pouches. Okay, because they perform two functions, they are known as genito respiratory pouches. On the lower side of the arm, that is on the other side, they bear, uh, they, there are small openings which are known as podial pores. Okay. On the lower surface of lower side of the arms, there are small openings which are known as podial pores. And as the name suggests, they are the pores through which the tube feet protrude to the outside. And tube feet, they are as already mentioned, the tube feet are devoid of ampulla and sucker, and they are highly reduced uh, and they are papillae like small papillae like structures. Okay, now the digestive system is uh, uh, very simple without cecum, intestine, and anus, but stomach is large. They are non glandular sac and almost fills the interior of the disc. You can see over here, this is a stomach region. Okay, and um, of your idea, they are practically mud feeder, feeds on microscopic organs and leaking organic matter. Okay, uh, so this is the ophiotrix. Okay, so this is about the ophiroidia. Fine, thank you.